All right, uh, we'll bring the meeting to order. We have Terry, Gina, and myself, so we have a quorum. Uh, do the Pledge of Allegiance to the flag. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag. Nice thing. And to the republic for which, for which it stands, stands. One, one nation, nation the God, God, indivisible, God. with liberty and liberty justice, justice for all. Okay. Uh, correspondence. Can you help us out here, Terry? You bet. Correspondence of September 14th from a local business to Sergeant Sagan. Thank you for your prompt and courteous service. From a resident from to Sergeant Falco and Officer Russell, the resident was appreciative for their assistance with the de-escalation of the resident's neighbor. Next one, director at a local retirement community to Sergeant Sagan, PFC Gray, PFC Harrington, Officer Johnson, Dispatcher Anderson. The director expressed his gratitude for all of the efforts put into locating a resident who is having a medical emergency. And lastly, a resident to SPD. This new resident was grateful for the patrol checks on his vacant house while he was preparing to move in. That's the end of the correspondence. Thank you. Public audience, do we have any public out there? Hearing none, we're okay. The, we have the minutes of August 20th. Does anybody have any additions, deletions, comments? Hearing none, can I hear up a motion to have them approved and submitted? A movement for approved from Terry. Okay, a second. I second the motion, Jenna. Okay, uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, so we got that done. Now we have old business, no, yes. Old business, the Tremblay arbitration decision. Chief, do you want to take this? Yes, I, I will. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, the State Board of Mediation and Arbitration released the decision or arbitration award regarding Jason Trombley's termination dated September 1, 2020. And the last paragraph of that decision reads, in conclusion, we find that the evidence presented supports the grievance dishonesty and that the town has produced a preponderance of the evidence that I had just caused to terminate the grievance. We deny the grievance. Okay, and that was a two to one, right, decision? Correct. Okay. Reports, the chairman has no report. The chief, do you have any? Yep, so uh, several things. Uh, as far as the sector rules are concerned, uh, we did have two large gatherings of young adults or juveniles. Uh, one was at the intersection of Bushy Hill Road and West Street on August 16th. And another one, a group of people were trespassing on the property at Hot Metal Country Club on the following day on 8 17th. Uh, most of the individuals dispersed upon the police arrival, uh, but it was what they call sort of a drop spot uh, type of party that's communicated by social media. Um, it was organized by a person and he was spoken to uh, and the young adults came from all over and, and were quickly dispersed. Any idea on the number? I do not. Was there 10 of them? No, I think it was much more than 10. Okay. All right, thank um, you. Yep, <clears throat> for our uh, body cameras and in-car cameras, a proposal is being made tomorrow night to the Board of Finance to transfer funds from the police private duty uh, for the first year of the body cameras and in-car cameras uh, with the plans of the state reimbursing 50% of the cost of the purchase of those body cameras. So, so that will be done tomorrow night at the Board of Finance meeting. <clears throat> In addition, a request will be made to transfer funds to purchase three administrative vehicles and moving forward, I'll be looking for us to budget uh, two replacement vehicles each year from that private duty fund through our budget process. I have two quick questions. Um, yes. Did you say 30% or 50% reimbursement? I thought it was 30. So it is 30 going forward with the new 
uh, the new OPM procedure and the new law. Okay. There is still some funds available from the current, which is also the past, okay. funding for body cameras. And that percentage is 50%. They don't break it down to 50 or 30, depending on the community. It's 50% okay. refundable. So we did uh, touch base with OPM. There are some funds still available. It's a first come first serve. And so that will save the town about $40,000 if okay. we make a move on that uh, quickly. So I'm hoping that the Board of Finance tomorrow night will approve that funding source. You're does the reimbursement come back to our private duty fund or does it go to the town? I don't know where that goes back. Okay. Good question. Uh, you'll mention this reimbursement to the Board of Finance and, and the quicker they act, the better <laughs> when you make the presentation. Yes. Yes. Super. Okay. Uh, any other questions about the, the body cameras or in-car cameras or the vehicles? No. Um, so continuing on. Um, so just to sort of give you a general overview of our overtime status, it, it seems to be something that we uh, take a very close look at every single year. And um, right now we are down 45% uh, in the supervisory overtime. I'm sorry, in the non-supervisory overtime. Um, so the patrol officers and down 24% for the supervisors and then 36% decrease uh, for dispatch. And that's all those are comparing the months of July and August of 2020 with the months of July and August of 2019. So overall, we're in a better position than where we were last year with our overtime expenditures. Now that will change with the special duty or the, the uh, school resource officers going back to the schools? Yes. We, we have been using them for to help out with overtime, if I remember. That's correctly. correct. Yep. Okay. Um, we had our CALEA online assessment uh, that occurred during the end of August to the first couple of days of September. We were told that it went extremely well. And we are just waiting for a written confirmation of that as well as a report. Uh, moving on to Good. personnel. Uh, we're currently still in the selection process for uh, to fill three patrol officer vacancies. Um, hopefully we'll be able to present to this board a certified officer uh, before this commission next meeting. Um, to fill the vacancy, since we have three of them right now, um, we had a non-certified testing and application process that expired in August. There have been one round of interviews so far, and there are more scheduled this week. And we have kept the certified process open indefinitely, and we'll be doing interviews this week for those as well. Uh, we are currently in the, in the selection process for the seventh dispatcher. The preliminary background is underway and we hope to have a better understanding of the qualifications and suitability uh, within the next couple of weeks to bring that person before you as well. And that's all that I have for uh, the chief's report. Have we, uh, is there any scuttlebutt about uh, impending resignations because of the new state law? Have you heard anything along those lines? There have been a lot of discussions about the new state laws. Um, I have not heard anyone um, giving a serious consideration to either early retirement or leaving the profession here because of those laws. The lieutenants, how are you guys, heard anything? No? No, I no other than, sorry, go ahead, Fred. Yeah, no, I, I've heard no feedback from any officer in town okay. requesting early retirement or resigning because of the new public act and yeah, nothing on my end. Okay. Yeah, the same commissioner. Nobody okay. has said anything. Okay, super. Thank you. Uh, the consolidated monthly reports. Any comments?
So how about uh, commission? If you don't mind, I have a I have a comment about that if you don't mind. Sure. Um, so although that the consolidated monthly report doesn't reflect it, um, we have had 23 motor vehicle thefts uh, since January of this year. Uh, last year at the same time we had seven, but last year we had a considerable amount toward the end of the calendar year last year. So we ended up with 20 or 21 last year and we're at 23 right now. Um, so uh, we are working very diligently to try to stop these motor vehicle thefts. And it's again, not just us, it is uh, the region, the state, the surrounding states. We are involved in regional meetings. Again, if we can push it out there, the number one way to prevent these motor vehicle thefts from happening is to just simply lock your cars and keep your keys and your key fobs inaccessible. Yeah. Seems to be the way it is. Could you, could, by the next meeting, could you give us an idea of September of 19 to September or August of 19 to August of this year, how many we've had uh, car thefts we've had compared to August, August of the year before? Or is that too difficult yes. to discern? No, no, that's, that's very simple to do. Okay. All righty. Last thing we have here before new business is preliminary monthly activity report. Any, anything there? Anyone have anything to say? Hearing none. Uh, new business. Chief, do you have anything you'd like to report under new business? Um, if if there is nothing for new business, I do have uh, I do have one comment, but that that would be sort of after the. If anybody else has any new business, I don't have any. I do not have any. Okay, and I do not have any uh, that I could think of at the moment. Uh, um, I can just say that the, the selection process uh, for the uh, deputy chief seems to be from the police commission's point of view moving forward. And we'll leave it at that. Uh, and you had some other new business, Chief. Um, yeah, just, just a quick comment. Um, I would like to recognize two individuals who are near and dear to this police department uh, in this community for their recognition earlier today as Simsbury hometown heroes. They are former police commissioner, Jim Fleming, and the late Ann Long. Their service and commitment to community is second to none. And they were recognized by the Board of Selectmen earlier today. Thank you. Yep. Uh, super people, both of them. Uh, there's no other new business. I will entertain a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn from Terry. I second the motion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. The meeting is adjourned at 715. <laughs>